So Nick, I, I got to tell you, when I was younger, I remember 2001, I remember going through the video store that existed. Yeah. We used to get videos in a store yeah. and uh, seeing a poster for The Pledge, the film we're talking about today. It's all peace. I don't there. like the pic the poster. I thought the poster looked really kind of poor. It, it didn't make me want to see the movie. I didn't know anything about the movie after looking at the poster. And here we are, you know, 19 years after the film has come out, and I finally got a chance to watch The Pledge. <laughs> finally got to see The Pledge. Uh, directed by Sean Penn. It's one of his, I think, his third movie. Mm -hmm. All star com, uh, cast. It was uh, not really regarded, but it had awesome reviews. Yeah, it had a pretty high uh, Rotten Tomato score that had yeah. gotten compounded there. Um, most people really liked it. Roger Ebert really enjoyed it, and it's tough to get on his great films list. I really enjoyed um, it when I saw it when I was in film school. We talked yeah. about the, the wonderful cast in Out of Sight last week. Yeah. This film has a cast of people that, while they are, a lot of them are character actors, they're not those like people who've led films. No. Um, or really like exploded in the past couple years, but they're great character actors. And there's so many that actually, if you look on the IMDb and the Wikipedia and you read the poster and you check this, there's a different list of casts in almost every form that you look at. Um, and because there's just so many people, it's, it's almost like they squirreled away names wherever they could. Um, we're going to break it down today. It's definitely, it's a cop drama. It's a little melancholic. It's a subdued performance from Jack Nicholson. It's a and great story, great acted, great really directed. Got favorable reviews. Why does nobody talk about it anymore? I don't know. We're going to make a pledge to discuss it and break it down for you today. All right. Welcome back to Kyle and Nick on Film. I'm one of your hosts, Kyle Goth. You can go to filmreviews.com. With me, as always, is Nick Palachuk. For the St. Paul Filmcast, and today we're going to talk about uh, Sean Penn directing a movie, and actually the interest of it was actually supposed to be filmed here in Minnesota. Um, they lobbied hard, and I actually got a conference, an audience with the governor, wanted to shoot this movie entirely in Minnesota, but it fell through. So different, some scenes were filmed in Canada as in Nevada, but this was primarily was supposed to be filmed here initially in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. um, Sean Penn and I think Jack Nicholson both tried to moonlight the governor at the time, and it just didn't work out. Yeah. <laughs> and it's tough to tell, to convince anybody that you want to film in Minnesota, because we don't even really like being outside all the time in here. Um, so... Yeah. It's, it's Sean Penn directed, of course, early in his career. Of course, he did Into the Wild several years later, probably his most famous film. Stars yeah. Jack Nicholson as a uh, retiring Jerry Black, a uh, cop that's basically getting out of the game. And it, during his retirement party, he's called out to the scene of a crime, I believe a seven-year-old, yeah. um, who was brutally murdered. Uh, and basically, in the, in the opening of the film, we, we get the understanding that we've discovered who the killer is, and the situation has played itself out. But as Jerry goes through his retirement and tries to forget and tries to like get away from it, yeah. he finds himself not believing that the story is done yet. Yep. And, and we see a little bit of unraveling and, and him trying to make his life into something that he's not sure he can actually build out of it. Yeah, so I, I regard this as like a theme of letting go, even though it's something really repulsive. And maybe not all the pieces mean, and maybe it's best and it's, it's hard to let things go, even mm -hmm. though it's going to corrupt you even though it's a noble task that you're doing. Yeah, because we get that very nice moment during the retirement party where the, you know, the guys have kind of like hit off to the side. They're discussing yeah. this murder. They're going to go and, and check it out. shot really well. Shot very well. Yeah. Uh, and Jerry is compelled to go talk to his buddies. You know, it's, it's his, his work guys. And he's going to try and, and he gets himself entangled in the situation when he very easily could have just stuck to his retirement party, stuck to his retirement, maybe been a whole lot happier if he did. Yeah, you have this very, I, I think it's, this is one of Jack Nicholson's outstanding best performances. And that's, I mean, for his whole career, and this one still stands out. This is actually more of an acting. But the whole scene of him at the airport contemplating whether to get on the plane or not. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. And then and it's not until of, you realize that he's not in Baja. Like, they don't really force feed that to you. And all of a sudden, you're just like, wait, wait well, he didn't, he didn't have a plane. What's he doing? What's he not doing there? And and it kind of drives our story in a direction I didn't expect it to go. What I think I like about Jack in this is he lets, he doesn't, even though he dominates the scene, he lets the other actors get their moments. And actually, he emphasizes everybody get their moments uh, around him. I'm trying to think back. Does he have any classic Jack Nicholson outbursts in this film? No, I, uh, well... Maybe the closest the, thing, there's a moment in the near the finale of the film where he kind of yeah. loses his composure a little bit. Yeah, um, but, but he's very hold in. Yeah, it reminded me of Al Pacino's work in The Irishman last year, and, and Joe Pesci's as well in that film, where it's like two guys known for their ability to have these bombastic outbursts. And they play and it low. Very, like, it doesn't happen throughout that entire film. And this yeah. is one of the more subdued performances from Jack Nicholson, a, a guy who's 
known for those large scale performances and who has a ton of Academy Award nominations and wins. Um, this is for it, I think that's why people don't think of it that way, but it's a beautifully subdued performance. I think the one thing that being an actor directing this film is that each actor in this gets their good moments mm -hmm. and really emphasizes their moments. It's a great ensemble cast. Well, um, and everybody even the ones who play don't with... get their moments, like Harry Dean Stanton, I wouldn't say gets like a cathartic sequence in the film at no. all. But when you're when you have an actor and you've made a friend in this business, you can ask that favor. You know, yeah. like when uh, Bradley Cooper made A Star Is Born, there were some notable small roles in that film that were filled with actors that were were bigger good. than that yeah. um, performance and. When you have an actor, you can. You want to come in for a day and yeah. play the gas station owner with Jack Nicholson? Oh, I don't want to do that. No, yeah, yeah, well, yeah you're going to say, say yes that. to that. <laughs> yeah, um, at the time when this was filmed, I don't think a lot of people knew who Aaron Eckhart is. I don't think a lot of people knew who Helen Mirren is. Um, Sam Shepard was in there. Benicio del Toro was a no name. Mm -hmm. um, so Sean was able to assemble a good acting cast before they were really famous. I mean, there's a small part of Sam Shepard being in this. He's a yeah. phenomenal writer. And a good actor, too. Well, and Patricia Clarkson has always been more relegated to a TV actress in a lot of ways, but she's quite good. I really enjoyed her in The Green Mile, and that's what I always think of her when I think of her, like, strength performance-wise. Yeah. Uh, Lois Smith, who we, we talked about with the Minority Report. She had a small role in that film as well. Um, uh, Tom Noonan, who is always popping up in the weirdest movies, <laughs> and usually in some of the weirdest roles. I just caught him in The Monster Squad yeah. playing Frankenstein's monster, and it's like he just appears when you don't expect them to, but that opening credits list where they, you know, show us on the fishing house and yeah. they just rifle through those names and you're like, oh, he's in this? Oh, she's in this? Where are they, where, how are they going to fit these actors into the movie? <laughs> so it's like a, I think it's the whole theme of the movie is you make a pledge and you're going to stick to this no matter if it ruins you. You're going to solve this and maybe even corrupt you a little bit, but you want to stick it out. You want to do good. Yeah, and that's the tragedy of, of, ending a career as a, as a police officer is there's always going to be one of those cold cases you weren't able to yeah you know take out there's a great scene of him coming back into aaron eckhart's office mm -hmm. and he's like why why are you here you yeah. should be out you know, and and you're you're fishing. bringing in these pictures and paintings yeah. and, and you're trying to put together pieces of a puzzle that aren't really there yeah. um yeah this reminded me a lot of, of zodiac one of our previous picks where you know, mark ruffalo bit. is having you know, struggles with that too. He's, he's leaving cases that he wants to see the end of and he yeah. doesn't know if he's got it in him to finish it off. Um, it's, it's a painful thing to watch because he's, you know, given our climate right now and the way that, you know, our, our police force is being viewed in our current political climate, Jack Nicholson's character does seem like a pretty good cop. No yeah. matter what. He that's, does that's seem a... like he is a good cop who does care. He makes a pledge on his last night that he's going to find uh, the killer. Yeah. That's a foolish thing to do, but it's done with the best of intentions. There's a great scene of Jack Nicholson and Mickey Rourke that I completely forgot about, and I actually saw it, and it played out marvelously. Yeah. Uh, here's Jack actually pretty much gives the keys of dominate the scene to Mickey Rourke, and Mickey Rourke does a fantastic work. Sean Penn idolized Mickey Rourke, and in fact, it's documented that him and Tom Cruise would sneak on the set of Rumble Fish to watch Mickey Rourke act. In fact, mm -hmm. they, they used to go to bother the crap out of him and you get tips and everything and took Mickey Rourke like, leave me alone. So it's very <laughs> fitting that Sean Penn's going to direct a movie. Uh, I want to put my idol, who I idolize in the acting performances. At least it's a little part of this when movie. He, he, does a, he does a great job of placing him in a role that he can play. Rourke was struggling with certain parts of his career and lifestyle yeah. at that point. I think getting a, like one scene with him in one room getting to really put his acting chops on display. One wonders if this sequence, because it is a beautifully done shot. I mean, I know. It's, it's maybe three minutes of the movie, but he owns that scene, and he's in a room with Jack Nicholson, and he is taking over all the, the, the acting chops for that. <laughs> One wonders if maybe that helped get him the role in Sin City or The Wrestler and kind of yeah. like helped with that career resurgence that we saw from Mickey Rourke. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about um, Chris um, Margus. Yes. The cinematographer. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, definitely well-accomplished cinematographer and Sean Penn hired a marvelous professional. This it's, it's actually shot very well because you're doing a lot of outside, you're doing a lot of tracking shots, you're doing a lot of exterior and interior shots and especially when he did the retirement scene then he transitioned over to like when they tell the parents about in the, the turkeys in the farm yeah. and you see the how it's going to consume their whole world, how, how small they really are mm -hmm. to figure out how they're, what, what happened to their child. So um, he's done The Boxer, The Mission, The Reader, The Good Beef, The Lost Son, and The Pledge. So 
No. If you have a the in your movie, <laughs> you probably want to hire Chris Mangas. It's not right. bad. If we're going to put an A and or the, maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe so, contact yeah. him. Yeah. I, I enjoyed the cinematography. For me, the film's, I don't want to say downfall because I, I did like the movie. The film's biggest struggle was in its editing. I do think there's a lot of sequences in the film that go on a second or two longer than they should have. Yeah. Great, you know, great shots that have a moment where it kind of just feels like, oh, you lost me there at the end. And you have to kind of pick up the pieces a little bit. It happens a lot earlier on in the film as as we see Jack Nicholson trying to convince people that it's right. To I'm keep right. Looking. I'm so right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there's there's great moments, and then you you lose that pacing just with two seconds. You know, like with two seconds, you fall off the pacing. You have to get kind of pulled back into the film. Thankfully, when you have a Nicholson performance and you have all these great cast members, you can get pulled back in very easily. I think we talked about it with the Zodiac. When you have good acting, it's hard to be an editor and say. Because yep. you have such good performances, and when is it good? You don't want to slice out the wrong. It's hard to edit a good acting film. Yeah, yeah, some films shouldn't be edited down. Like in the case of Zodiac, I think that two an hour, two hours and forty minutes flies by. This yeah. film was two hours and four minutes. I did feel that drag. weight on it yeah. and that drag. Um, and it's it's not any one specific block of film. It's just peppered throughout our moments where you're like, okay, I'm out. Okay, good performance again. You're pulling me back in, and it kind of keeps you in it. But you can definitely see uh, Sean Penn's focus on the actors, yep. maybe over the the story's uh, cohesiveness and pace. So my theory is why you have a good a movie that got great reviews, you have great acting, you got a good story, why didn't it really get successful? Kyle, I, I agree, marketing was not very well with this. Mm -hmm. As well as, you, how can he sell this story? I think he, it's very hard to, because there's really not a fantastic payoff at the end. That's that's exactly what I was going to say, is that the film's payoff at the end, the, the climax in Denouement is so un, unfulfilled. Yeah. That's how I felt when I finished the movie, is I was, I was like, this is it? Like, not to say that an ending can ruin a movie, because it didn't ruin this movie. It was still a very enjoyable film. I think the ending is bad. Um, it doesn't show me... It doesn't show me why I've been in the film for two hours. Exactly. And mm -hmm. I think that editing, you really need to think about it, especially with a writer, you need to think about a good editing. Yeah. How to end the movie. And there, it's just kind of like, you're just going to slowly down. Instead yeah. of break, you're just going to step off the gas and... Yeah, it's almost like um, an unrelated film comparison. Ford v. Ferrari last year, I felt like, was five minutes too long. There's yeah. five minutes yeah, at the end of that it, yeah. film that I feel like shouldn't be the end of that film. The, the film ends in a very clear spot, and then we get five minutes of extra character work that doesn't really do anything for our characters. No, it should just this be... one should have been five minutes longer. I wanted to see what happens to our characters that we care about. We get in a place where it's upsetting, and it, a film can end upsettingly. That's fine. Yeah. But it ends in a way that's upsetting, and you don't feel like you have ended your story. No. You feel like you maybe uh, your your VCR stopped taping two hours into a two hour and five minute movie. You there know? had to be something else. There had to be some kind of a tangible thing at the end to just kind of collapse it all. Yeah, I need one more scene. You give yeah. me one more scene that just kind of tells me where I'm at at the end, and that's a problem for it. There's also the subject material itself. It's not. It's not a. You know, joyful <laughs> film. Hey, in any you want to go see a movie about a guy who wants to go hunt? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's hunting a child murderer, and like, and we it's we see great. some pretty yeah. gruesome details it's too. I mean, we see. And that's, that's a natural thing because I've had a tough time selling it to friends, even though I love this movie mm -hmm. and it's greatly acted. It's hard to sell this. Yeah, I think I think you get you know some pretty gruesome images, some pretty gruesome uh, you know effects work with these bodies and kind of yeah. looking through that stuff. And it's it's almost like you know if this film had been released in 2011, when like you're starting to get that boom of like true detective and like yeah. true crime stuff i think this film would have done a little bit better i think it deserves a rediscovery uh rediscovery for that reason i also think it came out in january that's yeah. a bad time to release a movie back then january <laughs> was your death area uh, the film and then was... i think that's producers saying we don't know what the heck to do with this exactly because the film also uh we get this a lot where like a january release of like a wide release film like 1970 17 this year came out in a january release but it had a limited release in December, so it could be eligible for Oscars. People that's talk the about same, it. Well, that's so, the yeah. same way it was back then, too. But this film did not get a limited release in December. It came out in January, which means it wouldn't have been eligible for any of those awards for 11 more months. Yes. And that film would be forgotten at that point. Not many films can survive that. And I think this film is a prestige-level film. Um, 
specifically for its performance by Jack Nicholson and it just fell behind. I mean, she got rid of that mustache. Okay, uh, what do you think of the movie? Do you like the? Have you seen the pledge? Uh, what do you think of our thoughts about the pledge? Um, definitely. Yeah. Did you like its uh, cross promotion with Lemon Pledge uh, Cleaners? Um, maybe that would have gotten it seen more. Um, we want to know your thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> Check out the pledge. Um, it's available on a lot of different services to rent. Uh, yeah. We want to know your thoughts below. If you were able to get through some of its more gruesome details, did you like Jack Nicholson's performance, or are you oh, a big God, bombastic like Jack yeah. Nicholson, the shining with an axe kind of person? That's okay no. if you are, but we want to know your thoughts on it. Drop a like there as well. We'll even give you two seconds here. One and a two and a... There you go. You were able to like the video, and we're thanking you for it. Um, don't forget to subscribe for more content. We get new episodes every single week. They're here. They're waiting for you. Uh, and hey, you can check out the Patreon too. Patreon.com. Become a member. Um, from the better team. Yeah, patreon.com slash Kyle Nick on film. Uh, we got the link down in the description. Click it, check it out, tell your friends. Don't forget to share this video too and you can keep that conversation a rolling because we like to have the conversation with you. But hey, we're behind a, a screen so we you know, need to speak to you. Uh, <laughs> that's all time we have for you guys. You can yep. check out my many reviews on GoatFilmReviews.com and check yep. me out every single week here on Kyle Nick on Film. Nick, where can we find you? You can find the St. Paul Filmcast where I interview local independent filmmakers from the Twin Cities area on Stitcher, iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon Radio. Check it out. Pledge to be with us here next week. I pledge. I pledge. We'll see you then.